Number one, a quadratic function f is defined by f of x equals x minus 7 times x plus 3. Without graphing, identify the x-intercepts of the graph and explain how you know. So x-intercepts, so if we think about a graph, x-intercepts are here on the x-axis. So we know that they have a y-coordinate of 0, which means that they're going to make this function be 0. So if either of these factors equals 0, we know that that x-value is an x-intercept. So you can probably just know what number you would plug into this part to get 0, or you can think of setting up an equation x minus 7 equals 0, and then we just add 7 to both sides, so we get x equals 7 as one of our x-intercepts. So I'm just going to write it as 7, 0. Then we do the same thing to the other factor, and we figure out what x value will make this 0. So when we subtract 3 from each side, we get x equals negative 3. So negative 3, 0 is another x-intercept. Then it asks us to expand the product of these two binomials and then use the expanded form to identify the y-intercept. And the y-intercept is going to be on the y-axis, so we know that the x value will be 0 and we'll have some y value. So expand just means multiply this out. So we have x times x, which is x squared. We have x times 3, which is 3x. Negative 7 times x is negative 7x. And negative 7 times 3 is negative 21. And then we can combine these middle terms uh, because they're both x's, they're like terms. So 3x minus 7x is negative 4x. And then we still have that negative 21. So then you can remember that the y-intercept has an x value of 0. So if we plug in 0 here, that's 0. Negative 4 times 0 is 0. So your y-intercept is just the constant term when it's in standard form, the one without an x. So that is negative 21. So negative 21 is your y-intercept. Number two, what x-intercepts of the graph, what are the x-intercepts of the graph of this function? So again, the x-intercepts are going to make each of these factors zero. So again, for this one, what minus two is zero? So you probably know that that's going to be two, right? So x equals two is one of the x-intercepts. So written as an ordered pair, that's the ordered pair to zero. So if we look down these first ones, we can rule out C and D since they're negative 2. Then for this next one, it might be a little harder to tell because we've got this 2 in front here. So if you don't know from looking at it, you can write the equation that this expression must equal 0 and you can solve it. So we can just subtract 1 from both sides. So we get 2x equals negative 1. Then we can divide by 2, and we get the other x-intercept is that x equals negative 1 half, written as an ordered pair, is negative 1 half comma 0. So then we can rule out A, and we're left with B as our two x-intercepts. Number 3, here's a graph that represents a quadratic function which expression could define this function. So again, we have these in intercept form. And these ones are easy to tell what the x-intercepts are, okay, because it's just x plus 3. So we know that the x-intercept here would be negative 3, because that would make it 0. And here, negative 1 plus 1 would give us 0. For B, it would be negative 3 and positive 1. For C, we would be crossing at positive 3 because 3 minus 3 is 0 and negative 1. And for D, our x-intercepts would be positive 3 and positive 1. So if we look here, this x-intercept is at negative 1. This one is at positive 3. 
So we want negative one. Okay, so that rules out B and D. And we want positive three. So that gives us option C. Number four, what is the y-intercept of the graph of this equation? So remember, y-intercept, right, is on your y-axis. So you know that the x-coordinate is zero. So we're thinking about if we plugged in zero here, you get zero and zero. So your y-intercept is just that constant number in standard form. So in this case, the point zero, four. Then B says an equivalent way to write this equation is that y equals x minus 4 times x minus 1. So what are the x-intercepts of this equation? So x-intercepts, remember, we know that the y-coordinate is 0, meaning that these should multiply to 0. So that tells us that one of them needs to be 0. So if this one were going to be 0, the x would equal... 4, because 4 minus 4 is 0. If this one were to equal 0, 1 minus 1 would be 0. So if x is 1, that piece would be 0. So then written as ordered pairs would be 4, 0, and then 1, 0 for your x-intercepts. Number 5, Noah said if we graph this equation, the, the x-intercepts will be at 1, 0, and negative 6, 0. Explain how you can determine without graphing whether NOAA is correct. So again, if we think about where the x-intercepts are, they're on the x-axis. So you have some value that will produce a 0 for the y-coordinate, right? So we know that the y will equal 0. So that means if I take these values Okay, that Noah believes are intercepts, if I plug in x into the function, it better give me back 0. So let's plug it in. So we're plugging in 1 for x. We have 1 minus 1 for this first part, and we have 1 plus 6 for the second part. So 1 minus 1 is 0. 1 plus 6 is 7. 0 times 7 is 0. So this one did give us back zero. So Noah was correct on that one. And then if we plug it in again using x equals negative six this time, so we have negative six minus one, and we have negative six plus six. So negative six minus one is negative seven times negative six plus six, which is zero negative seven times zero is zero, which is good and means that negative six zero was also x intercept. Number six, a company sells a video game. If the price of the game is P, the company estimates that it will sell this many games. Write an expression that represents the revenue in dollars from selling games if the game is priced at P dollars. So remember that revenue equals the number of items sold times the price. So if we sell one at $20, if we sell 83 at $7, if we sell 125,000 at $3, okay, you multiply however many things you sold times the price of those things. So here's the number sold, right? This is the number that they're saying that we're likely going to sell. So that's what would go in for numbers sold, 20,000 minus 500 times the price. And then we multiply by the price, which is P. So then we just multiply by P. So it's going to be 250,000 minus 500 times P. So not plus P, not minus P not divided by p, but times by p. Number seven, write each quadratic expression in standard form, draw a diagram if needed. So remember you can do that area model if you want to, 
um, I'm just going to do distributed property. So I'm going to do x times x, which is x squared, x times negative 6, which is negative 6x, negative 3 times x, which is negative 3x, and negative 3 times negative 6, which is positive 18. Those two terms in the middle are like terms. So I'll add those together. Negative 6 plus negative 3x is negative 9. And then we have that plus 18. Second one, remember that squaring a binomial means multiplying it by itself. So we have x minus 4 times x minus 4. So remember, we'll get x squared for that first term. Then we're going to get a negative 4x and a negative 4x for those middle terms. And then we're going to get negative 4 times negative 4, which is positive 16. We've got those middle terms that are the same or that are like terms. So negative 4x plus negative 4x is negative 8x plus 16 for the final answer. Part C. For our first term, we've got 2x squared. Then we've got negative 8x for the first middle term, 3x for the next one, and then 3 times negative 4, which is negative 12 for our constant. So we have 2x squared. Then we have negative 8x plus 3x is negative 5x, and then negative 12. Then this last one, um, I'll do this one area model so that any of you that like area model, I do one like that. So we've got this at 4x, this at negative 1. Okay, then we have 3x, and we have negative 7. So then you draw in rectangles for these. And we're just trying to find the area basically of each rectangle. So 4x times 3x is 12x squared. 4x times negative 7 is negative 28x. This rectangle is 3x by negative 1, so that's negative 3x. And this one is negative 7 by negative 1, which is positive 7. So then if we add all of these rectangles together, we have 12x squared plus negative 28x plus negative 3x plus 7. So those middle terms are negative 28x and negative 3x, which is negative 31x, and then plus 7 for standard form. Number eight, consider this expression. Is the expression equivalent to this and explain how you know? So you can multiply this whole thing out if you wanted to. Um, one thing I look at here is that we've got a negative here. Well, when I multiply x times negative x, that's gonna give me negative x squared. And this has a positive x squared, so they can't be equivalent. And so if you wanted, you could you could multiply it fully out. But if you can find one piece that isn't going to match in the end, that could be your explanation as well. So if I did multiply this out, so let me just multiply in the box here. I have 5 and x, and I have 6 and negative x. So 5 times 6 is 30. 5 times negative x is negative 5x. 6 times x is 6x and x times negative x is negative x squared. So we get positive 30. When we add these two terms together, 6x plus negative 5 is plus 1x, and then we have negative x squared. So it's the negative x squared that's a problem. So if we write this in standard form, we end up with this, and then you can see that it's not equivalent there. So is the expression 30 plus x minus x squared in standard form? 
Okay, so standard form, remember, needs to have the x squared term first, then the x term, then the constant. So the answer to this would be no. The x squared, in this case, the negative x squared needs to be first. And the 30 needs to be last. So it needs to be written like this. Number nine, here are the graphs of the functions f and g given by 100 times 3 fifths to the x power and g of x equals 100 times 2 fifths to the x power. Which graph corresponds to f and which graph corresponds to g? So a couple of things I notice here is they both start at the same value, which we can see. So then it must have to do with this growth factor here, right? So this one is 0.6 and this one is 0.4. So that means that this one is decreasing faster because it's closer to zero. So this one is decreasing faster, okay, or steeper than the other one. So that must be B, okay, it's falling faster. So G of X needs to be B and F of X needs to be A. Number 10, here are graphs of two functions, f and g. An equation defining f is f of x equals 100 times 2 to the x. So that's our f function. Of these, which of these functions could be g? So one thing that we're looking at for f is it starts at 100. So our g function that needs to be lower than this. Okay, so we're looking for a number lower than 100 since it starts below it, right? So that rules out C and D because it's not starting at the same spot and it's not starting above it. Then when we go and look at the growth factor, right? So F is not growing as rapidly. We can see that G is already overtaking it in this screen. So G needs to have a higher growth factor. Okay, so this number here, B, needs to be higher for our G function. And so when we look at this, 1.5 is lower, so that rules out B. So then A must be the graph, or must be um, the function that matches the graph of G.